All right, let's start working on the normal distribution. This is in lesson four. Uh, this is going to be based on having a mean and a standard deviation. We talked about standard deviation in lesson three, and we showed how to calculate standard deviation. Now I'm just going to give you the value and show you how to use it, okay? So the first thing I want you to realize is, you know, what's the basic shape of a normal distribution data set, okay? We've drawn a lot of the distribution graphs as far as histograms, frequency polygons, and those are good for small sample sizes, but when you start talking about a large number of people or possibly the population, the big group that you're interested in, you're going to draw a different shape and you're going to kind of generalize the shape some. And so we're going to just do a basic idea of what we're talking about. And again, this is just a quick introduction. Okay, we're not getting real deep into this as if you were in statistics and really studied it. But we're going to talk a quick introduction of what the normal distribution is. Now, as far as the shape, it is a bell-shaped curve. It looks symmetric. It has a, basically a high point in the middle. And it has sloping sides off to the ends on the right and the left. It'll take a little time to get used to drawing this. But this is the basic idea of what a normal distribution would look like. The normal distribution is going to be centered around the mean. And it's going to be spread out based on the standard deviation. Okay? Now the standard deviation tells you how wide the data is compared to the mean or how narrow the data is compared to the mean. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off to the end. Notice I, I drew the curve so it goes slowly to the axis here. I'm going to draw three standard deviations, like three little tick marks on the right and three on the left. In general, you will cover a majority of this curve if you put three standard deviations on the right and three standard deviations on the left. Now, what do I mean by you're going to cover all of this? Let me go ahead and write this down. I'm going to try to make them stand out. And I tried to spread my tick marks out evenly. Okay? If this was units of five, this would be adding five, add five more, add five more. What do you think you do on the left hand side? <laughs> subtract five, subtract five, subtract five. So I'm looking at this as an axis and I'm trying to label some numbers. Well, the five or whatever number I add or subtract is how much a standard deviation is. So a standard deviation is from one tick mark to the next, that is how much your standard deviation is. Okay? Now, I'm going to mark off, like I said, three above and three below. When we have actual numbers, we'll put those depending on our example. What I mean by covering most of the data set is that if you look at three standard deviations below the mean, so this mark right here, and three standard deviations above the mean, you're going to have almost 100% of the data. Now we're going to phrase it in terms of probability. We're going to say we have almost 100% chance of being between this low number and this high number. <clears throat> now what does that mean, being between them? If I was to shade my curve and shade everything from the low number up to the high number, does it look like I've shaded most of the curve? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This represents 99.7% of the data or 99.7% probability of being between the low number, whatever this number is, and the high number. Now, that leaves a little room for some tail ends. We have a tiny amount of open space here and a tiny amount of open space here. Anybody have a guess how much is left from this end and this end? covers the entire curve? What percent? A hundred percent. What if you did a hundred minus 99.7? You get 0.3. Okay. 
Now, that means I have 0.3% that has not been shaded or accounted for just yet. This is a symmetric curve. What does that mean? What do you think that means, symmetric? It's equal in both ends. You distribute it equally or evenly. So if I distribute this evenly into two ends, I can divide this by two. You end up with 0.15%. Now, this little tail end right here is 0.15%. This little tail end here is 0.15%. Okay? One of your goals for this section is to try to identify how much you have in certain little sections. So right now, we know one thing out of the empirical rule, which is going to be a set of three numbers to help you with these standard deviations. One number is 99.7, and that starts with three below and three above for standard deviations around your mean. But you can figure out your tail end sections by subtracting it from the 100, because that's the total amount, and cut it in half because it's symmetric. Okay. Now, what if I change my picture to look like this? And again, every time I'm going to put my mean in the middle, and I'm going to mark off three standard deviations above, I'm going to try to spread them out evenly, and then three below. And this time, instead of doing three to the left and three to the right, why don't I just do two? If I do two standard deviations, this one is two standard deviations below. This one is two standard deviations above. If I want to look at what's between those two numbers and shade this amount, is that more or less than the purple? Definitely less. Okay? Now, this number, when you do two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below, it represents 95%. Okay? You could subtract that from 100, or you could subtract it from the previous number. Because, what do you know already? This little tail end section is how much? Yeah, 0.15%, 15 hundredths of a percent. Very small amount. That'll be true for all of them? It's going to be true for all of them, yes. 0.15% here. Okay? The only thing I don't know are these two sections. Well, what I can do is pretty similar. I can say 99.7. Minus 95. What do you get here? What's the difference? 4.7. All right, and then cut it in half. What do you get? 2.35%. Well, that tells you how much you have here. And how much you have here. Okay. Well, if I've done three standard deviations away, now two standard deviations away, let's do one standard deviation away. draw your normal distribution curve, put your mean in the middle, and mark off three standard deviations on the left, three standard deviations on the right, and now let's focus just moving one away from the mean, one standard deviation away from the mean. If I shade what's in between there, I'm going to 
going to get this picture. Do I have more or less than either of these two? Yes. Got even less. I keep getting closer and closer, which as I shade it keeps giving me a smaller and smaller portion of the graph. This is actually going to be 68%. Okay? What we have just determined, and I've given you these numbers, these are stated in your empirical rule. You have 68%. 95% and 99.7% are your common values no matter what your mean is or what your standard deviation is. It doesn't matter as long as you know that it's normally distributed and I'll tell you that and then you have to know the mean and you have to know the standard deviation. But if you move one standard deviation away from the mean above and below you are going to expect 68% of the data or a probability of 68% of being between them. If you go two standard deviations away, you will expect 95%. If you go three standard deviations away, you will do 99.7%. And the nice thing about these problems, <coughs> even though you may not be used to normal distribution, is that these percents you work for every example. You will use them over and over and over again. Now, something else we were doing. We were locating these tail ends and telling people how much they are. Well, what if I do the same thing here? Yep. Here are the ones I already know. But to get these two sections, I can subtract 68 from 95. What do you get there? 27. And then it's symmetric, so cut it in half. So 13.5% is right here. And 13.5% is right here. Now, these numbers are going to occur over and over and over again. You do not have to get different numbers every time. The only thing that changes are the numbers on the bottom. And I have to tell you what your mean is and what your standard deviation is so you can use it. If they're going to occur the same over and over again, if I can just learn how to use the numbers in pyramid rule together, I can tell you what each little section is. I can answer any question in the world. Um, one other thing that I want to mention. If I was to take this section and cut it in half, I shaded it in blue, what would each side be? 34%. Okay, so this one's 34%. This one's 34%. Add up the following numbers. 34. 13.5, 2.35, and 0.15. You get 50. Now, 50%, have we talked about a number that deals with 50%? Yes, we have. The which one? The median. What percentile is the median? 50th percentile. Now, notice what you have been finding. These are percents. You can think of them as percentiles. This is the 0.15% percentile. Okay, not even 1%. This is the 2.5% percent percentile. <coughs> this one would be, what's 2.5 plus 13.5? 16.5. That's your 16th percentile. And then this one jumps to the 50th. And then this is your 84th percentile. And then this would be whatever 84 plus 13.5 is. 97.5? Um, yeah. Okay. Then add 2.35, 99.85, and then you're at 100%. 
So these percents go right along with the positions of percentile, but notice you only have specific positions. Now, if you were in a statistics class, you would learn how to do the 30th percentile. We don't have to do that in this class. We're just getting good introduction, normal distribution, because you know you can do any percentile you want, okay? But we're only going to stick to the ones that give us standard deviation values centered around that mean. Okay, so it helps you remember standard deviation is centered around your mean. Okay? So, what could you do for any problem? Start off every picture by drawing your normal distribution curve. Label your mean in the middle, and again, put three tick marks above, three tick marks below. Once you put in your tick marks, go ahead and draw your little sections to the top of your curve. And then label each little section with the percent that you figured out. They're always going to be the same. Okay? We said 34% was in the middle on both sides. What came next was 13.5%. And then what came next was 2.35%. And then the little tail end sections were the 0.15%. That is consistent on every empirical rule problem. Never changes. The only thing that's going to change are the numbers that I put down here and I will have to tell you the mean and the standard deviation. Now, what if I tell you your mean is, for example, 10 <coughs> and your standard deviation, I'm going to abbreviate, let's say it's 5. You're going to put 10 in the middle, and then you're going to add 5 above it each time, and you're going to subtract 5 below it each time. So what would this number be? 15, add 5. 20, add 5 again. 25. Now over here you subtract 5. 5, 0, and negative 5. Now don't be bothered by the fact that it's negative. That's just how the numbers worked out. Who knows what this example represents? You know, it's just the mean and the standard deviation. That's the only thing you have to really add to your problem. Now I can start asking you questions. For example, I could say, what is the probability? Of being between? Zero and twenty-five. What is the probability of being between zero and twenty-five? Now, all that means is here's zero, here's twenty-five. I want to be between those two numbers. So I want anything from here up to here. I'm covering this little section, thirteen point five. I'm covering this section, 34, this section, 34, this section, 13.5, and this section, 2.35. 97.35, okay? 
And that's it. You're done. So you see how you use this. Anything between those two numbers, you just list all the sections in between them and you'll add up the probabilities, you'll combine them as a total. But between it, we'll take it from here all the way up to there. Okay. Questions? Okay, what if I asked you this? What is the probability of being less than 20? What is the probability of being less than 20? So here's 20. <laughs> Less would mean below it. Got to go all the way to the end. We use this section? No, this one's going to be back open again. That's above 20. Ninety-seven point five, and you can add them up individually. Point one five, two point three five, thirteen point five, thirty-four, thirty-four, and thirteen point three five. Does anybody see a quicker way? <clears throat> okay, you can subtract what we're not using. This little section. This is what two point five total. What could you subtract it from? Subtract it from 100 because the entire curve is going to represent 100% of your data. So what the normal distribution is trying to do is just give you a way to show how much data is in each section. Okay? If we say less than 20, then we have almost all the data, 97.5%. If we say from 0 to 25, we have almost the same answer, 97.35%. doesn't matter if the answer is the same or very similar. It just matters what's in each section. <coughs> so what if I asked you, what is the probability of being between... <coughs> Zero and ten. What is the probability of being between zero and ten? Okay, you would do thirty four plus thirteen point five, forty seven point five percent. So you have these two sections right here. Between 0 and 10. But the nice thing about just being introduced to the normal distribution is the fact that you're just going to focus on the standard deviations. And the more spread out something is, the bigger the standard deviation would be, the farther apart these two numbers will be. If they're closer to each other, these last two numbers will actually be a lot closer to each other. But no matter what the shape is for this bell-shaped curve, whether you have a big standard deviation or a smaller standard deviation, whether it's really squeezed together or more spread out, as long as it's a normal distribution, these percents hold every single time. The only thing that changes is the numbers on your axis, and that's it. Everything else is the same. Okay? What percent is above 10? What percent is above 10? How much? 50. Okay. Because you have to do the 34, the 13.5, the 2.35, and the 0.15. Now, we said 50% made us think median, which makes us think 50th percentile. 
do you realize that this is the mean and the median? Because I'm basing everything off the mean, but if it also represents the 50% mark, it's also the median. Does that always happen? No, definitely not. In a normal distribution where it's symmetric, that will happen. Okay? But in other cases, you might have a different shape for your data set. That's not going to happen. Now, what do I mean by different shapes? Something like this. Does that look like the same shape we've been drawing? No, this would be a skewed distribution. Those percents do not work on this picture. Or if it was skewed the other way, definitely not the same picture. Okay, we wouldn't use those percents. That's a completely different situation. Or if I had this and lots of hills, those percents don't work anymore. The only time they work is if I tell you it's a normal distribution, I tell you it's bell-shaped, and you instantly draw a picture like that. And you try to make it as symmetric and neat as you can. Okay? And you want to leave yourself enough room to label these percents and also to label your numbers on your axis. Okay, but once you have that picture, you can answer any question that someone gives you just by looking at the appropriate sections. Okay, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Will those percentages always be the same for the bell shape? Yes, ma'am. These percentages stay the same for all bell shaped curves like this. And I will use probably both terms just because we're introducing this and you haven't had a lot of in depth. There's so much more we could talk about, but I'll say normal distribution, I'll say bell shaped. Okay, so you're guaranteed. You will not come up with any other percents. 